Ever wanted to blend different exposures but didn't really know how? Hi guys, Oliver here. In my last video I took you to Wales to photograph the waterfalls. One of the common issues we have in waterfall scenes is when we're having a evenly exposed image then very often the water is nothing more than a washed out and blown out white mass. There is no texture in it, no detail left, nothing. Well, the common way to tackle that is we're taking several underexposed shots of the same scene as well until we do have the texture in the water and then we combine these images. We blend exposures. Today I'd like to show you two very easy way to blend exposures. And we're going to start with the very basics and work in our way in step by step. Are you ready? Let's go to work. So, now we are in Photoshop and I've already opened uh, two images of the same scene for you. This here is what I would consider my base exposure. As you see, uh, we do have some nice texture in the darks and the shadows. But as I mentioned before, the water is just blown out and there is not a lot left. I've also opened the same image, just underexposed. As you see, we've totally sacrificed the darks, but the texture and the details in the water here, this is what we want. The first thing to do is we're choosing our mover tool and while I press and hold the shift key on the keyboard, I just move the image over the top of our base exposure and just drop it here. What Photoshop has done is here on the right, you see we have two layers now our background and we've put our underexposed image as a second layer above the background. We can make these layers here invisible, so this is our base exposure and the layer on top is underexposed. If I would make the base layer invisible nothing changes because the opacity of our top layer is set to 100%. If I reduce that you see it becomes showing, showing through. So we can also rearrange these layers. I could Okay, that needs to be unlocked. I have now the brighter exposure on top and the darker one on the bottom. But in this case, I prefer to have my base exposure and then we want to have the water parts of it in here. Good, so now you know how layers in Photoshop work. The next step is we need to add layer masks. What are layer masks? We have here at the bottom this little uh, icon and we add a layer mask, a white layer mask. Nothing has changed, that's because white means or indicates that nothing is masked out, everything is visible. If I delete that layer mask and I create a new one while I hold the Alt key or Command on Mac, and now we've created a black layer mask, an inverted one. And as you see, I make that top layer invisible and nothing changes because black indicates that everything of the entire image is masked out. To show you an example, I'm choosing my paintbrush here, make it a little larger and just paint over half of the image here in the layer mask. Be careful not to paint in the image, always paint in the layer mask. If I make it now invisible and you see the right side of the screen of the image has not been affected but on the left side that becomes invisible. Uh, the left side becomes visible because it's white and the right side becomes stays invisible because it's black. So this is how layer masks work. How can we now use that? Simple. The easiest way, we're deleting it again and we're adding a black layer mask again to make the top one invisible. Now I'm going back to my paintbrush, just reduce the size of it and I also reduce the hardness. I make it a nicely feathered brush. Next step, I reduce the opacity because I don't want to have any hard edges, let's say, yeah, 20-25%. Make sure you have selected your black layer mask and now you just start gently painting in to the image, just over the waterfall. And you see we are slowly revealing the detail in the water. more to make to show you how exactly it works and you see how the detail becomes visible yeah 
uh, something like that. Okay, what we've done now, if I make it invisible, you see our base exposure, nothing has changed. And all we've done here is we brought the texture into the water back. If I now make the base layer invisible, it shows you only the parts we have brought into the image. Make it visible again. So if you think the effect is a little too strong, as I think it is here, simply re reduce the opacity of your top layer, something like that. Et voila! That's the first and easiest way of blending two images. Now, make that layer, only the top layer visible again. What we see here is we have parts of the background which we do not really want to blend in all these dark parts here. We only want to tackle the white parts. I'm going to show you a way, an easy way, um, how we can mask out all the dark parts and only leave the black parts visible. To do that, I select my layer, uh, add a white layer mask. In the menu, image, apply image. We leave the settings as they are and look how the layer mask has changed. To make that layer mask visible, I hold the Alt key or Option on a Mac and click on the layer mask itself. And uh, what I get here is, yeah, let's call it a black and white image of it. The black and white image is nothing else than a mask based on luminosity values. So if I would make the layer visible now, you see that the entire image has been affected. Everything, make that visible again, that is bright here in our layer mask will be blended over our base layer. So, as we see, the effect is a bit, yeah, not quite what we want. The reason for that is we only want to tackle the white parts. How to do that? I choose my layer mask again, then press Ctrl L or Option L on a Mac, and we are opening the level, Levels dialog. So now we are modifying the levels of this layer mask because I want to mask out the dark parts here in the histogram on the left, I just move that slider from the left to the right and I'm blending slowly out the dark parts. I mask them out. If I would move the slider from the right to the left, I would reduce, I would affect the white bits or the bright bits of the image which I don't want. So a little less here. And maybe that, yeah, that looks quite good for me. So <clears throat> what we have now is a layer mask, which only shows us the white bits, mainly the waterfall. There are some bright parts in the sky here and a little bit in the foreground down here. If I make that visible now, layer visibility, layer invisible, and you see only the bright parts of the image become affected. Now, because that effect is way too strong, so we are only reducing the opacity of our top layer. Something like that. Yeah, until we have some nice texture in the water. And actually, now do the same, make it invisible, make it visible again. All we have affected is the bright bits in the water. Just reduce that a little more to make it look more natural. And that's it. That's the second easy way to create a little layer mask and to blend two images. So now you know two very easy and simple ways to blend exposures. For me, this is usually the starting point to do more modifications like brightness, contrast, color, dodge and burn and there are of course also more subtle and advanced ways of creating masks and selections but today's video was about showing you the basics of exposure blending so if you like to dive deeper into it just leave me a note in the comments below i'm always open for your wishes and suggestions that's it for today i hope you enjoyed it and I also hope you learned something. Down there is a like and a subscribe button. And I know that you know what to do with it. Bye for now. And I'm looking forward to see you soon.